What's up, y'all? Mark Smith, JBS Training Group. Let's talk about the flinchies, man. What is the flinchy? Um, so that is, I'm getting ready to fire a shot, and I'm flinching on the gun, right? I'm pushing on the gun, and the gun is hitting either low left for a right-handed shooter or low right for a left-handed shooter. What is that, and how do I fix it? This is a quick, dirty uh, uh, hit on what I think is actually going on here. So the first thing we need to kind of do is say, hey, why, why are you pushing on the gun? And the obvious answer, in my opinion, would be because you're perceiving that you need to, right? Something is happening that's making you want to stop it from happening. It's a mini explosion going off in front of your face and it's trying to like buck out of your hand. So you're trying to drive back into that. Uh, but you're doing it out of time and also you're likely doing it more than you need to. So I think I, I, there's a theory, right? And I've been talking to my, my buddy about this and I've been thinking about it and I, I think uh, he might be onto something. Now I can't really scientifically prove this, but if you were to take a shot at this target and you're aiming here and you fire the gun and I think I, I, if I were to give you a Sharpie and I said, hey, draw me on this target what you're perceiving. If you've aimed here and fired the gun and you are perceiving that the gun is doing this, right? And oh, Mark, it went up to about right there, I'm pretty sure. Okay, cool. If you were to take this mug and spin it 180 degrees, I think this is what you are trying to put into the gun, right? This is what you're trying to dig back into because your perception is that it's doing this. Therefore, you're trying to do an equal and opposite reaction into it. So let's kind of cut this down and, and work through it in steps, right? Stick with me on this. All right, guys, so the first step to fixing your perception is to make your perception into reality, right? So we gotta actually see what is going on before we can say, well, I feel like, or oh, I felt like, because if you know anything about me, man, I, I'm all for your feelings are a liar. Let's see what the target tells us. So the way I'm gonna do this, man, uh, Juanza Kim has a little exercise. I can't remember what he calls it, but I think it's great for, for figuring this kind of stuff out. Um, we're gonna actually print on this target what the recoil arc is uh, as best we can humanly do. So I'm gonna aim into the center of the target, fire a single shot, let the gun lift, but I'm not gonna push it back down, right? And then I'm gonna fire a second shot. This is gonna print on the target what's actually happening with the gun, right? So here we go. that out all right so what we end up with here i thought it was going way up here but actually i find it's only going like three four inches tops and then that helps me internalize what's actually happening and how much i need to push on the gun right so how much force is required to let a, a heavy sig 320 go back to this spot and the answer is not much at all right i can almost just let it fall back there now there's some things to consider on this all right, so considerations on this. Man, if, if the gun actually is bucking you and, and, and is, is coming out of your hand and all this, obviously this increases substantially the perception of what's happening because it is moving more than something like what I just demoed. Um, this is why support hand and, and structure behind the gun becomes so critical, right? So a lot of times you'll see guys that are missing low left, missing low left, and they'll, they'll go to the internet and they'll say, hey, what do I do? And you'll hear everybody start screaming, support hand, support hand, support hand, right? And, and the idea, so I've, I've heard it said that this little finger can't overpower this hand. While that may be true, this hand can meet this hand, right? Meaning meet the strength this hand's applying. So while this little finger can't do it, this hand absolutely can, right? So what they mean when they say strong, uh, support hand, support hand, support hand, what's happening when you crush in with your support hand is it's decreasing the perception of the recoil arc, right? The gun is by default not bucking as hard. When it doesn't buck as hard, you won't put as much back into it, right? And so this is why trying to get a gun to not do something like that is so important. If, it, if this thing could just kind of move up and down in my hands, that'd be, that'd be great, right? Um, now, what can I do today to fix this issue? So the, the first part here that we just went over is Mark's theory on understanding why people are doing this. The foundational reason of why, why would a human being push into a gun, right? I think it's based on something similar to this. Now, I ain't got no scientific way to prove it again, right? Um, but I, but it, makes, it makes sense to me. Um, so, Mark, uh, I, I can only grip the gun so hard. It's still bucking me, whatever. How can I get better? at not moving the gun when I shoot it. I'm glad you asked, hang on. Now, ideally, I would want you to be able to fire every shot at every target you ever take like this, right? Because that is going to be the fastest way to pull the trigger and make a shot go off. 
But if you can't do that, if the target size or the target distance or, or whatever, and, and you knowing yourself and knowing you can't get away with that, if that just can't happen, there are some things you can start to impart, right? Uh, this is known as trigger prep. So what is trigger prep? Trigger prep is I'm going to effectively bypass the brain's propensity to push on the gun by affecting how I'm pulling the trigger, right? I'm gonna kind of short circuit its ability to know when to actually do this. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna disrupt the timing that it's doing it in, right? So there's two main ways that, that I think you should be trigger prepping a gun. I don't care which one you use, I encourage you to go try this and see which one gives you the best result, right? Uh, one of the first uh, times I ever learned to shoot really well uh, and hit what I was aiming at, right? Not fast, but hit what I was aiming at was when I learned to pull smoothly and cautiously through the trigger. Now, what's the issue with this? Well, by default, it's slow, right? It's slow. Uh, we're gonna call this the prep and roll, right? So the prep and roll is very simple. I'm gonna go to the wall of the trigger, right? The wall is where the pressure on the trigger meets and pushes back against my finger. So there's all this nasty in front of the gun or in front of the trigger, right? And then I hit the wall. From there, I'm literally thinking in my head, pressure, 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 until the gun goes bang, right? So we can't just say, oh, that feels good. I think I like that. We need to test this stuff, right? So I'm gonna test this on the head box of this target, however far back you wanna go. And we're gonna see, does that give me an increase in my ability to shoot the gun accurately? Let's see what happens. All right guys, so the, the test results have indicated that objectively that's a pretty good way to pull a trigger to hit what I'm aiming at, right? There's a different way. I want you to try the different way too because there's certain benefits and certain downfalls to both ways of doing this, right? So this one works pretty good, right? I'm gonna kind of denote that, got it. Next, I'm gonna impart what I call prep and snatch. Prep and snatch, so get ready for this. All right guys, so prep and snatch is going to be, I'm gonna think of the trigger's total travel from, from zero to 100. It's a zero to 100 scale. Zero is no one is touching it, 100 is the gun went bang. What I'm attempting to do when I, when I pull the trigger is I wanna to get to where I perceive I'm at nine, at least 95, right? So the wall, guys, that right there is not 95. Because if you pay attention, there's some nasty behind the wall, right? So there's the wall, there's a little movement, there's a little movement, there's a little movement, then it went bang, right? So the wall truly is more like 60 or 70, right? I'm trying to get to 95. So I'm gonna go wall and I'm gonna prep up to where I think 95 is. Cool, I'm pretty sure I'm there. Once I'm there, get ready for this. It's gonna blow your mind. I'm smashing the piss out of the gun, right? I'm smashing the piss out of the trigger. Now, everybody's always heard, stop jerking the trigger, stop jerking the trigger, stop jerking the trigger. Man, m maybe, right? Maybe when they're saying that, they're saying stop jerking the trigger and pull it smoothly and slowly because when you jerk on it, you do this, right? <laughs> There's a joke in there somewhere. Um, I would submit to you that, that smashing a trigger is not wrong so long as you do it the right way. If I can pull the trigger without moving the gun before the Projo exit, exits the barrel, I should get a pretty good hit, right? So the way I'm gonna test this is I'm gonna use my shot timer here and I'm gonna react to the beep. Four Science Institute has indicated through data collection and scientific research that the average human reaction time conscious processing is about 0.25 seconds, okay? In 0.25 seconds, the brain receives an input, formulates an output, and applies it, okay? What I've gotta do is I've gotta to react to this buzzer in less than 0.25. I'm, give, I'm not giving the brain time to catch up and move the gun, right? So I'm gonna prep to 95, and as soon as I hear a buzzer, I'm gonna pull the trigger as fast as I possibly can, and we're gonna see if jerking the trigger is actually wrong. Or are we taking so much movement out of the gun and, and reducing the timing of the gun going off so much that when I smash, the brain doesn't have time to move the gun before the Projo exits the muzzle. So let's see how that works out. So, 
Let's talk about it. All right, y'all. So again, you see objective data indicates that a prep and snatch and jerking the trigger ain't necessarily gonna be the wrong way to do this so long as you do it properly. If this fails you and it doesn't work, one of two things is happening. Either you're not at truly 95 when you decide to snatch or you're not reacting to the buzzer fast enough. So if I don't react to the buzzer fast enough or if I'm not at 95, there's downtime in the reaction and that gives the brain time to catch up and go, oh, he's doing it now, right? Um, the one, I think it was the second shot that uh, I demoed the prep and snatch on, the gun went early. So let's talk about that real quick because that will occur uh, every now and then. So if I'm gonna do a prep and snatch trigger press, um, here's what I'll tell you. There's, there's uh, different kinds of discharges. This is shooting, not sexual. And one of those I classify as an ED, uh, not the kind with the blue pill, different kind, right? Uh, this is gonna be early discharge. So the, I intended to fire the gun, but it went a little sooner than I anticipated. Everybody that, that this happens to will immediately go, oh crap, I suck. But I want you to consider, is it actually a bad thing? Guys, I would never, ever, ever prep to what I perceived to be 95 of the trigger's total travel and pressure required to go bang until I was on target ready to shoot. So, did you have the intention to fire the gun? The answer is yes, right? Because I would never do that until I had the intention to fire the gun. The next question becomes, did you hit what you were aiming at? The answer is also yes, because the brain had no idea that the gun was about to go, therefore it didn't get involved in the process. So, if you intended to fire the gun and you hit what you're aiming at, what's bad about it, right? Now, I'm sure somebody's gonna come up with something. That's fine, man. Uh, if you got some retorts, drop them in the comments. I'm all for a little friendly debate and, and talking about this stuff. But just because you get an ED while you're learning this doesn't mean that, that it's a bad thing. Also, consider that your, your propensity to have early discharge will decrease the better you get at this, which leads me to the next point. It's not uncommon for guys with prep and snatch for their brain to kind of short circuit on them and they, they, they just can't figure out how to do it. The technique may not be bad, you may need work on the technique, right? And so consider how many times you've ever done this in your life and why would you think you'd be perfect at it the first time you ever tried it, right? Um, so anyway, trigger prep methods, prep and roll, prep and snatch. They're applicable and by all means, if you need that to hit what you're aiming at, please do so, right? But I want you guys to remember this. I think that trigger prep is a technique that you should be striving to ever increase the distance and decrease the target size that you need it for, right? Because by default, it's slow. I've got to set it up, I've got to wait on the gun, all this kind of stuff, it's gonna be slow. Ideally, I could just slap on a trigger from any distance at any target, right? Uh, but that just ain't real life a lot of times. So, if you need trigger prep, use it, right? But I think you should be constantly striving to decrease the amount of time you need it. If you're still prepping a trigger at five, seven, 10 yards, on an open target, I think that's a novice level uh, technique that you should be trying to move move past pretty quickly, right? Uh, so what can I do to learn to smash a trigger without moving the gun? I'm glad you asked, let's talk about it. All right guys, so what I think we need to do is we need to practice shooting the gun the way we wish we could shoot the gun. So the way I'm gonna do this is I just hold it down in front of my face. Um, first, I, I'm not gonna hold it up in, up in front of my face, I'm gonna hold it down so I can pay attention to the muzzle. And I'm gonna get in my good solid grip, my good solid structure behind the gun, right? And I'm gonna practice doing this like I want to. I'm gonna try to pull the trigger as fast as possible without doing this. Does that make sense? If you are doing this, I want you to put your brain on what you're doing and think about what is actually happening, what muscle is doing that? Like, what am I doing that's causing the gun to do this and just stop doing it, right? And keep working at this until you can get the gun to stay flat, yeah? Now, once you've got that accomplished, I think that putting it up in front of your face and using your dot, using your sight or whatever to kind of monitor uh, and, and quantify that yes, I am in fact pulling the trigger without moving the gun is a good thing to be doing. Once you can get that done, it's time to put it into live fire mode. In live fire mode, uh, one of the best exercises for this is doubles. If you don't know about doubles, go go just Google doubles, you'll figure it out. It's essentially two shots as fast as you can pull the trigger. It's, a, it's an exercise based on, like the, it works on trigger control, structure behind the gun and how consistent it is and is it changing under recoil and then also vision where are you putting your eyeballs um <laughs> we go over this extensively in class obviously i don't have time on a youtube video to go that deep into it but i'm looking for doing this every time i pull the trigger so that i can do that 
faster and still be as accurate as pressure, 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 boom, pressure, 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 boom, right? Um, so I'm going to demo that for you and then I'm going to leave you with those thoughts and let you go kind of run, run wild with them and, and come up with what you, what you think you need to come up with. Uh, but other than that, man, that's what I got on trigger prep. And uh, let me show you guys something real quick. All right, so that last bit emphasizes what I what I want to be able to do, right? I want to be able to just slap on the trigger and maintain accuracy that's good enough for the target as far back as I possibly can because it's always going to be faster, right? Um, so what are the flinchies? The flinchies are your brain trying to overcome what it's perceiving, right, and, and fix it. How can I eliminate that? Right now, you can impart trigger prep and make it go away right now, right? Um, you need to have good solid structure behind the grip to reduce the perception of what you're what you're getting right um, and then you need to be working in dry fire to be able to pull the trigger without moving the gun as quickly as you can possibly do that other than that man that's what I got on the flinchies and how to overcome them uh, time on task is a thing right the more you do this the more you experience the recoil the the I don't want to say the easier this gets necessarily, but the more comfortable you'll be with the gun moving and you'll start to realize that if you'll just wait just a minute, it'll be it'll be right back. You don't have to push on the gun, right? So hopefully that gives you guys some stuff to think about, some stuff to work on, and uh, that's what I got, man. Check out the site for classes. Uh, sweet hoodies, right, if you're into getting ladies and stuff. And uh, we'll see you guys on the range, man. Mark Smith, JBS Training Group.